day. My name is Paul Prentice, sales engineer with the RL Detman Company. We represent Bell & Gasset products in Michigan and Northern Ohio. Today we'll be discussing expansion tank sizing and tank cold fill pressure. ESP SystemWise is the online software program from Bell & Gasset. One of its applications is for expansion tank selection. One of the first pieces of information needed for this selection is the tank fill pressure. How do you determine what the tank fill pressure is? Here is an example of a hydronic system. The bladder expansion tank shown here will be charged with air on the outside of the bladder. That air charge pressure will be equal to the cold fill pressure in the tank. Here is a typical piping system. The expansion tank is at the bottom of the system. Hydronic systems are completely filled with water. The system pump does not fill the piping. The pressure reducing valve, sometimes referred to as a PRV, is used to fill the piping system before the pump is ever started. That fill pressure is called cold fill pressure since we do this before heating the water. So, how do we calculate that pressure? First, we need to convert the height of the water in the building into pounds of water pressure. This is the equation we use. The conversion factor is different for water and glycol due to their specific gravities. And glycol varies by concentration as well. For now, let's just stick with water. Here is, is an example. Keep in mind that when we are talking about height, we are talking about the height of the piping system, not the height of the building. Sometimes the building height is quite a bit higher than the piping, or maybe the building has piping on the roof so that the piping height is higher than the ceiling on the top floor of the building. Using our equation, 100 feet is 43 pounds. Let's say you have a different building that shows 30 PSIG on the gauge at the bottom of the building. How high is the water in the column? Using our equation shown here, the piping height is 70 feet tall. Once we know the pressure due to the height of the building, our rule of thumb is to add 4 PSIG to that number. Why do we do that? If we don't, the pin in the automatic vents shown here will bob up and down with pressure changes and the vent will spit water out. The second reason is to make sure that there is enough pressure to keep the water from flashing into steam if the temperature somehow gets above 212 degrees. 4 pounds is enough pressure for about 215 degrees heating hot water. So back to our building example. Note the elevations shown here on the side. Here you see where the PRV ties into the piping system. In this example, there is 36 feet of elevation from the PRV to the top of the building piping system. 30 feet 36 feet head equals 15.6 PSIG. Now we add 4 PSIG for the air vents and the cold fill pressure at the PRV is set to about 20 PSIG. The cold fill set point of the PRV may be a little bit different than the expansion tank cold fill pressure because of elevation changes. Make sure you account for elevation changes between where the gauge is located and the PRV you are setting. If it is close, don't sweat it. But if there is enough difference, correct for the... If the PRV gauge that reads 20 PSIG is 7 feet above the expansion tank gauge, the gauge at the tank should read 23 PSIG. So that 7 feet of elevation is converted into 3 pounds. Therefore, the air charge in the tank should be about 23 pounds. Watch your specifications. The Bell & Gasset PRV model B7-12, shown here, has an adjustable range of 10 to 25 PSIG. The model number 7 has an adjustable range of 25 to 60 PSIG. We also have others for higher fill pressures. Make your specifications more generic and your job-specific plans more exact. Note the calculated fill pressures on your plans, not in the specs, as the jobs do change. That's it for today. For the next session, we will discuss maximum system pressure.
Thanks for listening, and if any questions, as always, don't hesitate to contact us.